What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Chris Doughty, AKA Doughtonator. And today we're gonna to be reserve driver on our alternate account, uh, doing this super formula race around Suzuka. Uh, we'll be racing from the back with no quality time set um, in a kind of lower, sorry, upper B or lower A lobby. Um, a couple of interesting things for this race. Uh, my main account quality time would have put me on pole um, I've done a few races on the live stream and we managed to get those races won um, and they're in kind of top uh, A, A plus lobbies so we know we've got great pace let's see how things play out when we are uh, starting from the back of the grid another special thing with this video is we have um, our mixed reality uh, GoPro uh, steering wheel cam as we see right now uh, these are the actual steering inputs aligned with the game in a mixed reality uh, kind of setup let me know in the comments below what you think of this. Um, it's quite interesting to see how we are basically wrestling with the car um, as we are racing through in, in cockpit view. Another challenging thing with this race is we're driving from the, the onboard cockpit view. Um, it just makes uh, really high immersion, but uh, it just makes things so difficult. You, you are low down, uh, you're deep in the pack. As the driver goes a little bit wide there, we take the opportunity to slip it down the inside and uh, through the second part of Degna, um, a lot of uh, chaos ahead really. Uh, someone must have rejoined the track there. As we break into the, um, the hairpin corner, a uh, little bit of contact to the inside, uh, accelerate away. We, we've acquired a two second penalty. Um, as you can see from me raising the hand off the steering wheel in the, uh, the mixed reality view, um, not quite sure why we got that penalty. Um, I think it was a, a slight bit of side by side contact. As we uh, misjudge the braking point slightly, have to throw it off the track to avoid the car ahead. Um, driving in the, the cockpit view uh, makes things a lot more challenging. Um, so yeah, it, it makes things very difficult. You're sitting much lower. When you're running in traffic, it's hard to get the, the peripheral vision to just kind of see uh, where your braking points are. So a bit of a, a shocking start there. Um, but hopefully nothing's uh, not too uh, damaging because we're on the alternate strategy here. Um, hard tires are required and uh, the medium tires um, as we're going to start on the hard tyres, pit after lap one to get rid of them. Uh, the Frey Bentos boys going to work there, getting those uh, hard tyres off and switching to mediums. Uh, we're actually going to make another pit stop later on in the race, so we're going to have two stints on the medium tyres. And now we should have some clear air and fast tyres to, uh, to put some good laps in. Um, if you're new to the channel, uh, consider subscribing. Uh, drop a like on the video if you uh, think it's worth it. Um, we try and do some, some things new, as we're seeing here from the, the mixed reality view. Um, I like to experiment, I like to kind of make fun content for you all to enjoy. And um, yeah, drop a comment and let me know if you like what we're doing. Uh, back in the car now, we are closing the gap to the cars ahead, uh, taking a lot of uh, Degna 1 and into Degna 2, taking that really quite nicely. Looking forward now to try and spot our braking point for the hairpin. Our fresh medium tyres, uh, trying to get the most out of them. Uh, we've got a clear track ahead of us, so we need to um, capitalise on that uh, before we get stuck into traffic in the dirty air. In these cars, the, the dirty air, the, the lack of downforce following a, a, a car ahead, uh, it's a huge, huge effect. Um, so right now we've got the, uh, the perfect clear track ahead of us. Um, round Spoon, uh, very successful round there. Very difficult corner. You've got to attack the corner um, in the first part to go very deep and scrub just the right amount of speed off and then um, uh, carry it on the exit down the uh, back straight there and then through 130 yard completely flat out. Spotting our braking zone into the final chicane to the Casio Triangle. Um, we go a bit deep there but we managed to collect it up um, and we've caught a huge amount on the cars ahead. Um, quite possibly these guys might be on uh, the harder compound tyres and maybe running um, actually, no, I made a complete mistake. For this race, soft and medium tyres are available. Um, so basically, uh, we're on the soft tyres now. Those guys ahead could be on the mediums, the slower of the two tyres, as we really close a huge amount there. As we just pass the, the, the driver there without really uh, putting too much effort in, perhaps on the, the slower compound tyre. Looks like a penalty for the driver ahead. Um, four second penalty for something, as we have to check up um, because he runs wide. That puts us in a very difficult position now. There's a car to our right-hand side going through the first part of Degna's. We just get a little bit bumped wide, um, <laughs> trying to catch the car uh, to not spin out and not to collect the car that already crashed ahead of us. 
um, as we are probably going to have dirty tyres now. We've lost a, a huge amount of time there for that car uh, going very aggressive into Dengen 1. If we almost lose the back end again, massive amount of opposite lock as we gather the car up. Um, as you can see from the mixed reality view, driving GT Sport with a, a wheel is, is the next level of, of immersion. It, it's superb. I was a long time controller player, uh, recently acquired a Logitech G29 wheel and it just feels amazing as we've got a car off uh, to the right hand side, penalty for another driver ahead. Um, it looks like a driver further ahead than that has acquired a penalty so things are really kicking off. Um, but yeah, driving with a wheel, it just feels superb and it really brings uh, GT Sport to life as we have to really uh, slow down the brakes there for the, for the drivers ahead. Um, right now we are not using the most of our soft tyres. Um, someone's managed to smash into the pit wall. Um, I, I can't figure out if they were indecisive about to pit or not to pit, um, but they've basically gone 50-50 there and smashed into the pit wall. Um, driver just makes a mistake there into the, uh, the first two corners. Again, very difficult corners. You, you carry a lot of speed into them and you have to kind of scrub your speed as you're turning through the corner. Um, and now we're up to 14th position, um, mainly through other people's mistakes. Um, a lot of this race was, was about uh, keeping your, yourself clean and letting other people uh, make the mistakes. Um, the cars are so, so fast and twitchy to drive um, that following a car closely as we have to really get hard on the brakes there to avoid the, the car ahead. Um, I think there was contact and I think that uh, GT Sport penalty system has awarded him a one second penalty for I, I guess blocking and um, can't quite figure that out because I'm, I'm pretty sure it wasn't his fault, he didn't choose to do that move um, neither was it my fault to, uh, to, to punt him into the rear um, but GT Sport has awarded him the, uh, the penalty as we are going through uh, second part of Spoon and hopefully looking to, uh, to, to make a, a bit of a gap, uh, run a little wide but we've managed to not spin out. Um, the guy behind us has dropped a long way back. Uh, he's must have served his penalty. And we've now got some clear track. Unfortunately, by this point, our tyres, um, the tyre wear for this race was quite high and we are probably on quite worn uh, soft tyres. But um, we're gonna look to, to close the gap ahead. It's looking like uh, four seconds to the driver ahead. Um, lap time so far for us, absolutely shocking we should be in the 139s uh, that's what we could normally do uh, in, a, in a normal race um, but just not having any any clear track or um, or any any laps without issue just isn't really working out for us so yeah we're, we're in the 141s which is uh, way off where we need to be um, looks like we are kind of in no man's land for uh, people to race with uh, we're on very second-hand soft tires uh, we have gone purple in the first sector which um, kind of is surprising uh, due to the, the tyres being so old um, as we come into the second part of Degna, Degna 2. Um, in the race it's difficult. Purple again from the, uh, from the second sector. Um, yeah, Degna 2 is very difficult in the race. I found it was always better to just, uh, just drop a gear extra compared to what you would do for qualifying with no fuel. And um, it looks like the driver behind is really closing in. Um, something to, to look out for there and we're going into the um, first part of Spoon, a uh, difficult corner, you're kind of scrubbing speed, going down through the gears and then trying to spot your apex for the second part. Penalties for drivers ahead. Uh, we've closed in a, a huge amount of those now, it seems. Um, quick look back, it seems we're under threat from the uh, French driver behind. Um, as he's gone to the inside through uh, 130R, we're just letting through there. There's no point uh, trying to fight or defend that manoeuvre. Uh, on the brakes early to um, basically give all the drivers some space um, and we've lost a bit of time uh, he's managed to scoot through we're going to go into the pits now get rid of these uh, soft tyres put a fresh set on um, and then see what we can do uh, the guy ahead just went to the pits also um, so we'll see where we come out and he's just still behind um, no no time gained there for that the pit as we are under threat from cars firing down the main straight into turn one um, we had an incident there ourselves which we made a, uh, a YouTube Shorts uh, video of, uh, worth checking that one out, it's, it's quite a, a fun uh, 20 second clip so uh, yeah don't forget to check that one out. Um, but yeah he's, he's acquired a penalty through the slightest bit of contact with the driver ahead as he was uh, coming in through, through turn one as we are now in the dirty air of 
uh, a bunch of drivers ahead so we're not going to get the the maximum out of these soft tires this time um, we kind of faint to move into the into Degna 2 um, cars uh, span out or crashed at the exit there which we managed to avoid um, but yeah the, the problem with these super formula cars is it, the racing is so intense that you you can't react to other cars if they have braked early or if they are uh, offline or if they make a mistake it, it often ends up with uh, a crash for both drivers we are side by side now in a pretty dangerous situation uh, looking now for the cutback which has worked for us uh, a bit too too tight on the quarter entry but we've got a good exit now um, but the car behind is threatening so we're gonna go defensive um, it looks like we might be safe for the moment uh, closing in on the car ahead uh, again into the, the braking zone of the, the chicane um, really difficult you, you've got to commit to a move we don't really do that we just uh, give him a little bit too much space we're taking a lot more curve than the car ahead uh, I think his tyres have done so he's gone off into the pits um, he, I think he was on mediums he'll be uh, switching to the soft to finish the race maybe and we are down the main straight now we're on uh, lap number seven um, looking ahead uh, one second to the guys ahead uh, we're in 12th position um, basically things are going okay it's, it's difficult as we are almost always in traffic it's really difficult to make any progress through the field um, and this is, is really a huge testament to the importance of qualifying now just take a moment to think that I am potentially the fastest driver on the track here my qualifying time on my main account would have put me on pole um, I'm also an A plus rated driver so again my DR is some 20,000 higher than everybody in this lobby um, but we've had real difficulty getting through the pack in this race. Um, it was a grid start, so we only started maybe uh, three, four seconds behind the pole, pole guy. But if you think about it, over the course of the time, we're having to um, avoid and get around 19 other cars. Um, and as you can see, we're almost uh, 21 seconds behind the leader uh, with a pit stop still to make and uh, no, we have we have completed our, our final pit stop, so we are um, racing to the end on this set of tyres. Um, but we're still we're 21 seconds down on the leader, um, unable to achieve any kind of lap time that's that's representative. Our, our fastest lap is at least two seconds off of um, what we could achieve uh, in clean air. Um, all of that's due to due to traffic. So um, qualifying, I kind of um, underestimate the importance of qualifying. If you put a really good qualifying time in and run the first couple of laps in a safe manner, uh, you will be absolutely golden to uh, improve your DR over time. Um, if you haven't put the effort into qualifying, if you haven't set yourself a good qualifying time, then it's just an uphill struggle. Even for a longer race like race C, um, everybody is, is on such an even uh, skill level, it seems, that um, as we just ride there, almost making a mistake, um, everybody is, is fast in the race um, and it's, it's really difficult to make any progress um, qualifying is key um, basically you should spend at least an hour's, uh, hour of your time qualifying for any of the daily races to give yourself a, a fighting chance so now it looks like we are, we are closing to, to cars ahead uh, we're up to 11th place um, and we're still some 22 seconds behind the leader so the leader is checked out and gone um, but I don't think the racing is finished yet as we look to the drivers ahead uh, all starting to punch up with this race with the different uh, tyre strategies um, you can see cars coming and going as we look to the outside of the, uh, the mile 7 livery um, Renault there a little bit onto the grass a little bit unhappy with that a slight term gesture from uh, my hands there as we're driving and we look to go cut me off in the braking zone uh, we are on the brakes, we're going to check up to really not hit the back of the driver ahead. And we have someone maybe going to the pits, absolute chaos there. Uh, looks like a four second penalty for the German, uh, really kicking off there. We're up to uh, ninth position, um, perhaps a move into turn one. Uh, always risky, but I think we're going to back out of that one. Um, considering it down the inside here, um, slight bit of contact. Um, lucky not to get a penalty there really um, shoving my nose where it, it probably didn't belong the German driver ahead with his penalty we should clear him at the next penalty line um, then looking forwards it's a uh, Spanish driver um, but we are 
uh, still under threat from a Spanish driver behind us. Um, our, la our tyres are looking a little bit second hand um, as we are wide at the middle part of Degna. We managed to keep it under control. Um, and it looks like there's a bit of intense battling going on ahead. Uh, German versus Germany versus Spain. Um, as a little bit of a cutback there, it looks like a car also crashed um, side by side from the drivers ahead. Now, the German driver has a penalty, uh, yet he's still fighting incredibly hard. Um, let's see how things uh, play out as we come into. Oh my god, he's, he's pushed in wide there. Uh, we've got ourselves in a difficult situation. We're really narrow in the corner as we exit, and it looks like the German ahead is going to serve his penalty. We've got someone right on our gearbox as they are going to go to the outside around 130R. Um, there they are on the radar as we just keep our tight line just to make sure we don't run out. We give them space uh, on the brakes now into the uh, final chicane. Um, looking to thread it through there nicely, which we get a good exit. Um, looking good there. Uh, Spanish driver is right on our gearbox still. Um, looking back there, it looks like he might be threatening for a move. We stay narrow into turn one we don't want to give them that inside line as we oh, we make a massive mistake there um, the narrow line we didn't uh, accommodate for the, the difference in speed that we would have to take through there um, playing from the, the cockpit view um, my, my kind of braking references are a little bit skewed uh, as we get an SR down for I'm not quite sure what maybe an unsafe rejoin uh, I'll probably take that to be fair. Um, I did kind of just get back onto track, almost uh, taking out that McLaren liveried um, car, car just went past us there. Uh, I thought we were going to get into um, another dive bomb into Degna 1 then, but we managed to survive that. Um, penalties ahead again. Uh, it's a very eventful race as the driver behind is looking to make a move. He's, well, I say make a move, he's looking to force a move uh, past us at the, the hairpin. Um, I'm not sure if he backed out of that to let me back past or not. Maybe it was a mistake. Um, either way, I'm not sure. Still threatening us in the mirrors and on the radar, as you can see. Um, and we just bottle it into uh, the first part of Spoon. Um, again, just missing the braking points. Um, the, the familiarity driving in the, um, the cockpit view just wasn't there. We had some, some practice laps, but uh, race is also uh, quite a bit different um, as we are now Close against the back of uh, another Spanish driver. Uh, it's a mile seven uh, liveried car ahead, uh, giving him space on the brakes. Um, so we are going now in to start the, the final lap, uh, which actually means right now we're on the penultimate lap. Almost missed that um, as we are in the slipstream of the mile seven car, getting squeezed to the uh, pit wall there. We managed to get alongside. Not, not going to make the same mistake we did last time. But the mild seven car has uh, done a massive cutback on us and fought his way to the inside on the second part of the first corner. I'm going to follow him through the S's now uh, in the dirty air on very worn tyres. Uh, always very hard work. Um, we're now back into ninth position. We, we gained a few, um, but now we've dropped back as we are suffering on the worn tyres. It looks like a driver there, the Spanish driver, may have uh, fresh tyres. Um, he just cruised past us there without really any trouble. Um, and he's looking very threatening to the other driver ahead. Uh, Spanish civil war going on as it's um, Nigel Mansell versus uh, Fernando Alonso maybe. Um, and Mansell has pulled a move but he's gone wide at the hairpin. Uh, Alonso cuts back and now they're going to go at it again as we uh, come into the uh, entrance to Spoon. And we can see stuff is going to kick off here. So we just hang back a little bit, take a wide entrance um, and Nothing's quite kicked up yet. Oh, uh, Alonso, no, so Mansell going for something in, in the second part of Spoon, but it doesn't work out. We're on the final lap now, so things are really high stakes. Um, Mansell, oh, we, Mansell's getting squeezed to the inside. Side by side through 130R, and no, they they took each other off. Unbelievable stuff. We'll take that two positions for one as we almost outbreak ourselves into the final chicane to finish the race. Uh, that puts us up into eighth position um, and we finished the race with uh, an eighth position. Uh, as you can see from my hands there, a, a slightly frustrating race. Uh, let me know what you think of that in the comments below. If you've enjoyed the race or if you enjoyed the, uh, the, the graphic editing with the, the mixed reality stuff, um, consider subscribing. Um, good to have you all on board. Um, enjoy your racing. 
um, and we'll catch you in the next one.